Hey. I hope we can hear me. Please, if you hear noise from the background, just ignore. <laughs> this is one of the reasons why I'm always muted. Let's take this worship song. and appreciate God once again. Let's thank him for our families. Let's appreciate him for how Amen. far he has brought each and every one of us. The Amen. title of the team of this fasting and prayer, restoration of the church and family. Just open your mouth and appreciate Amen. the Lord. Amen. Appreciate Amen. God for he has been faithful. 
Lord, my God, he has been, been good to you and your family. He has been, been good to me and my family. You've been hearing the news Jesus of people dying. You've been hearing the uh, news of someone dying. You've been going through social media and you're seeing arriving. You're seeing rest in peace. But no one in your family is lost. It's enough to thank the Lord. A friend of mine came here this night and I was complaining what has been going on in my life. I've been complaining psychologically. I'm not okay. I've been complaining emotionally. Emotionally, I'm not okay. I was complaining financially, I'm not okay. And someone that has not even known the Lord the way I know, he said, You have to be grateful. Why can't you be grateful? The fact that you are alive, the fact that you are here talking, even complaining, you should be grateful. That brought me back to myself. I was like, If someone that has not known God the way that I, I claim to know, someone that does not have deep understanding of God's holiness, he said, This and tell me, say, Who am I to? What has God not done for you? What has God not done for me? What are times when I come to the Lord and I want to pray? I say, God, you have done everything possible to save my soul. You have no excuse to say, ah, I have no excuse to say, this is why I'm ready to help. Because the Son of God has come to planet Earth and died for me. The Son of Man has called me over and over again to himself. has sent his spirit to convict us of sin. When we stray from his presence, he keeps sending his spirit to convince us of sin and to bring us back to him. What else do we want this God to do for us? What else do we want Jesus to do for us? No wonder he is weeping. No wonder he is crying. No wonder he is weeping. No wonder he is crying. No wonder he is weeping. No no Many no times we come to a fast and we cry, Lord, restore. And you will question, what exactly am I restoring? What exactly am I restoring? Father Lord, we appreciate you. We thank you, we bless you. We say may your name alone be highly exalted. For in Jesus Christ's most victorious name, we pray. Amen. Amen. I thank God for this privilege. I actually do not have much to say tonight. I do not have much to say. Least of all of us that are here. Um, but I trust God to have his way. Can you turn it on God? Sister Jimmy, sorry, I do not understand the message. I don't know if you can explain better. Okay. We'll be talking about... Uh, most of the times when I come for this uh, prayer program like this, and we say, Lord, restore, 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 restore. We keep praying. Ask the Lord to restore your family. Ask the Lord to restore you. Let the Lord restore the church. One question that comes exactly to my mind Okay, if that is not important now, maybe I will talk to you after this. Sorry, God bless you. So, as I was saying, what exactly is the Lord restoring? I'm talking about restoration of the church and restoration of the family, if I'm not mistaken. And we are talking about restoration. Restoration, according to the dictionary, said, is the art or process of returning something to its original condition by repairing it. Cleaning or purifying it. So one day when I came to this program, we are praying, Lord, restore, restore, restore. So a question just came to my mind. Say, what exactly is the Lord restoring? If the Lord is to restore, he has to restore something that used to be, but no longer is there. If the Lord is restoring your family, in what aspect is the Lord restoring? Is it the fear of God that used to be your family and the fear of God is no longer there and you want the Lord to restore it? Is it the fear of God that was once in the church and is no longer there and you want the Lord to restore it? When I come to say, what exactly, what exactly am I restoring? You come say, Lord, restore my prayer life, restore, restore. Do you have a prayer altar before? Do you have a prayer life for the Lord to restore? Do you have the fear of God in you for the Lord to restore? Most of the times we come, we fast and pray so ignorantly thinking we are there, not knowing that we are missing the mark. Not knowing that we are missing the map. That is why we need the Holy Spirit to guide us in line to how to pray. And the prayers we have what result. Now it's time for what self-meditation, which is why what I will be talking briefly on has to do with self-examination. Self-examination. You know, we Christians of these days, especially me, we are so consumed by what is happening in the world that we no longer have time to examine ourselves. We no longer have time to sit and meditate. There is something I normally do 
when I was new, when I came to Christ. You know, when you come newly to Christ, that passion is born in you. That hunger is in you. Is it to make heaven is in you? You are ready to serve. Please, if my DC, my, my, my earpiece is disturbing, just let me know. I can remove it. I'm hearing one noise like that. You are ready to give everything. You're muted. We can't hear you now. You're muted. Okay, sorry about that. Okay. One thing I normally do when I was so born in, like when I was so hungry for the Lord, that time when I came to Christ, you know, that joy, you are ready to give up everything for the sake of the Lord. After all that have been done in a day, when I sit down, I begin to sit down and meditate. What did I say today? I begin to sit down to meditate. Who did I offend today? I sit down and I begin to meditate. That's how my, my thoughts will just be running through my day. I went to school. I did this. I said this. I said this. I said this. You know, you know that self-meditation. I begin to examine my day that very day. I begin to see if there is, to check if there is any way I actually made a mistake. And I begin to ask God for mercy. I begin to ask for mercy in this area. Ah, I spoke to this sister like this, so I shouldn't have spoken to this sister like this. I begin to plead for mercy in that area. If it is something that requires apology, I go and apologize. You know, this is a life that is hungry for the Lord. Don't wonder the book of Matthew 13 talked about a man that went and sold everything that he has just to acquire this seven. He said he sold. He said the kingdom of God is like a man which sold everything he had just to buy a treasure. This man is, is so much aware of that treasure you want to get. The people of his household might not know why this man is selling everything. They might see him as a foolish as, as, a, as a foolish man. Me and myself, when I gave up my certificate and said, I did examination my practice, I returned it. My family people, they do not actually understand. They say, this guy is foolish. My mom was saying, ah, village people, they are the one doing this, so we need to take her to prayer house. They do not understand. That is because they lack knowledge. That is because they don't know that you what you have seen is bigger than that certificate. Because they do not know that the city where you want to go to is far beyond earthly et, 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 imagination. No wonder the Bible said that they of the spirit is foolishness unto the mortal man, unto the carnal man. They do not understand it. But at this very moment, self-examination has so died up to the point that we no longer examine our own life. We no longer examine our own life. When I sat down today, actually I've not even thought about this ministration to it preaching or coming to minister here. It was actually today. I sat and I was like, Lord, what do you want me to say to this book? Number one, I'm a very timid people. I'm a, sorry, I'm a very timid person. Number two, I do not even know what I'm going to talk about. As I was just sitting down and this thought just came, self-examination. You have to examine your life. Examine your life if there is any way you are found wanted. And the devil is so wicked up to the point that there is a place you are found wanted. The devil will not want to, will not want to, tap, tap, will not want to come to where you are. Just like a situation whereby I was seeing a sister on Facebook when I read about what she's going through. The sister said, I'm going through so much. The, the devil is attacking me. The devil is doing it. I sat and I was like, how come the devil is not attacking me like this? Sorry, it's not as if we want the devil to attack us. So no, it's not as if I want the devil to attack me. But I was just, I was like, the devil is always attacking this sister because she has something she wants to deliver. And the Lord, and the devil does not want her to deliver that. The devil wants to stop this sister from, I was like, how come this sister, the devil is attacking her? Is he, why is he not attacking me like this? I was like, ah, if you have what the devil wants, the devil will attack you. If you carry what the devil wants, the devil will attack you. Because when the devil sees that your life is found wanting in one area, when he realizes that this one, ah, anger is in how oh, the devil will want to leave you and focus on other people. Since the spirit of anger is dealing with you, if you die in that state of anger, my dear, you are heading straight to hell. If you die in that state of anger, you are heading straight to hell. Sometimes I begin to think about my own life. I just, ah, had, hardness of heart is there. Hardness of heart is there. Anger is, is occupying the life of a believer. Gossip is occupying the life of a believer. These are the things the Lord is talking about. What calls for self-examination? What is that weakness in your life? 
What is that weakness in your life that you are so aware of? I myself, I know of a particular weakness that the Lord will always remind me. I will begin to give excuse. I will begin to give excuse here and there, here and there. Sister, that the Helen will always tell me, there is no excuse with God. What excuse do you have before God? What excuse are you going to give? What excuse? The day she said that, ah, my mind, it was as if something struck my heart. Say you do not have any excuse. What excuse you have, son of man? And say it's because of my husband. It's because of this person. That is why this thing is still in my life. My dear brother, my dear sister, it calls for self-examination. We are crying for the Lord to restore joy in our life, yet hatred is still there. I have so many Bible passages which we are supposed to we are supposed to go through, but the way I'm being led now, it's just as if I should give a word of encouragement, just as if we should give a word of encouragement, then we'll pick it up for we pick it up with prayer. But if there is any need to go through the Bible verses, we'll go through it. Now, what I'm trying to say in this self-examination, for someone who does not understand what self-examination is, self-examination is just an act of carefully looking at your life, just looking at your life. Checking if there is anything in you that is found wanting. If there is anything in you that does not please the Lord. If there is any lifestyle you are living that does not glorify the Lord. If there is any words that you utter that does not glorify the Lord. If there is any joke you make in life that does not honor the Lord. And this self-examination is so lacking in life. Up to the point that we human beings, we are so much consumed with what other people are doing in life. That we do not even think about our own life. A few days ago, I was thinking, ah, where am I actually heading to? If the trumpet will sound now, will you make it? If the trumpet will sound now, will I make it? If the trumpet shall sound now, will I make it? Will you make it? So many of us, we are so looking at signs. That is one thing I do not like hearing about. The great tribulation will happen before rapture. Rapture will happen great before great tribulation. As children of God, we are told to be prepared. Whichever one comes first. Before you say great tribulation will happen, I begin to wait for great tribulation. You are you you are so much occupied in waiting. You say, ah, Jesus Christ is not coming now. The great tribulation will happen first. And before you know, trumpet sounds and the sense of God go. And you are left behind. My dear brother, whichever one that is to happen first, why not prepare? Which is what Jesus Christ has given us. Say, be prepared, be prepared, be prepared. My coming is now, be prepared. Whether great tribulation happens before rapture, be prepared. Whether rapture happens before great tribulation, be prepared. And how do we prepare? Is self-examination. 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 God forbid that on that day, you will, God forbid that you will close your eye in death and you are happily jumping to the heaven's gate. And once you get to that place, they tell you, get away. The Lord will tell you, go away, for I knew you not. That is a saddest statement that, could, that, that, that anyone could ever hear. One scripture in the Bible that scares me so much. He said, if the righteous says, scarcely be saved, what can the unrighteous do? I begin to think about the life, the likes of uh, Bishop, uh, Archbishop Idahosa, the likes of Billy Graham. After seeing the kind of great exploit these people did on earth, and you hear that at the end of the day they did not make it to heaven, you begin to wonder, what about me? If the righteous scarcely be saved, what can the unrighteous do? And that place in the Bible that also said that there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof is destruction. You might think what you are doing is right. You might think that you have attained the mark. You might think, ah, I'm preaching on Facebook. Ah, I'm so much burning with anointing. I'm casting the devil with fire. You think you are dead. But the Lord said the end thereof is destruction. Is the only is Holy Spirit alone that can tell us where we are. And that is why if you form the art of self-examination, no wonder the Bible said, judge yourself so that you will not be judged. He said, judge yourself so that you will not be judged. Examine yourself if you are still in the faith. Examine yourself if you are still running the race. Examine yourself if you are still in line with the word of God. Examine yourself if Christ is still with you. Examine yourself. So many people begin to misinterpret the presence of the Holy Spirit in our life as the presence of as, 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 as an act of speaking in tongues. You might receive the Holy Spirit and the speaking in tongues will come along with it. But once you give the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will leave. But the speaking in tongue will still remain. Do not be deceived. Because I speak in tongue, because I speak in tongue, because I pray in tongues, because I do this, and you think the Spirit of God is still there. Remember, the Bible said that the gift of God is without repentance. Once he has given you that gift, if you grieve the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will leave. If you grieve the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will leave. 
You know, the Lord who have so much lost touch, touch with the Holy Spirit, who have so much lost touch with the Lord up to the point that the Lord will want to keep hammering the same thing over and over and over and over and over and over and over again, just to get our attention, just to get our attention, just to get our attention. To you, I do not know that thing you might be struggling with. To you, I do not know that thing that might be in you, that you do not know, that you are not aware of. But through self-examination and crying to the Holy Spirit to review whatsoever that is in your life, that grieves him, the Holy Spirit might be, my, 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 the Lord might be merciful and reveal to you. The Lord might be merciful and reveal to you. I can remember just a, a, about a week ago, about a week ago, there is some, someone that usually offends me. And whenever this person offends, I will just be letting it go. Like I have, I, I, I actually brought out this policy of no complain, no, no, no explain, no complain, no explain. Once this person offends you, or once anyone offends you, you do not need to complain, you just let it go. Not knowing that this thing has been building anger upon anger upon anger. I say I have forgiven you, let it go, you not speak. Not knowing that it has been wearing anger and anger and anger, anger upon my heart. I will tell myself I have forgiven, I'm letting it go. I'm not going to talk, I have forgiven, I'm letting it go. I'm not going to talk. Not until I started having a recurrent dream. I will see myself in the dream. I will use anything that I'm holding, either stick or knife. I will be using it to be stabbing this person. I will use a stick to be hitting the person. When I wake up, I will be so angry. Will, why, why am I having this kind of dream? I don't have any intention to hurt this person. I don't have any intention to kill this person. I don't have any intention to, to, to actually harm this person. Why am I having this dream? When I woke up, I'll be like, I'm forgiving this person now. I do not have any anything against. I was like, am I a witch or what? Then when I sleep, sorry if you hear any noise in the background, just please forgive me. If you hear any noise, please forgive me. So if I, when I sleep again, I will still have this dream. Where people are trying to separate me from this person. I'm trying to fight, to harm this person, to fight. Then when I woke up, I sat and I began to meditate on this. I was like, ah, you have not forgiven. You lie to yourself and you say you are forgiven. Until I sat down and begin to meditate and begin to remember, ah, this person did this. Ah, Lord, I forgive him. Please help me. Let this thing be taken away. Lord, I forgive this area. Please let this thing be taken away. I might have said I'm forgiven with my lips, but my heart, I did not mean it. I was like, begin to cry to God, please release this anger. Every anger in me, every anger in me towards this person, please take it away. Every anger in me towards this person, please take it away. And I began to meditate on this thing. Do you realize that when the Lord began to open, reveal to me things that are happening, and I realized that, ah, truly I'm in sin and I've not forgiven. I truly have not forgiven. I will call a sister, and once this person offends me, I will go. I will tell this person, ah, if you see what this person did to me today, if you see what this person did to me, I say I have forgiven you. But any small opportunity I have, they ask me about this person, I will start complaining, not knowing that I'm actually murdering the person. Character, assassina uh, character assassination. I am evil speaking of this person. I'm speaking evil of this person. Gossiping, I'm gossiping. I am actually killing the character of this person with another sister, I will go and complain. My mom will come, I will complain, I will do this, do this. Another friend will come, I will complain, I will do this, I will do this. The Lord was actually revealing to me that you might not have killed this person physically with a knife and do this, but what you are doing is character assassination. You have not forgiven, you have not let go. Then I have to cry out to God, Lord, please have mercy. If I did not actually sit down like this, to self-examine myself. If I did not actually sit down to meditate, if I did not actually sit down to do this, I will be saying, ah, I have forgiven. I have forgiven this person. I have let go. And when once I close my eye in death, I will be jubilating. Ah, I'm heading to heaven. And the devil with that accuser will come out and say, oh, my Lord, no, this one is not permitted to enter your kingdom. And that spot will already be on my garment. To you, you might think you are doing right. To me, I might think I'm living right. Ah, forgiven. That is just with my lips. Ah, forgiven. I have let go. That is just with my lips. But on that day, to find out that you did not actually forgive. And the Lord will tell you, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity, for I know you not. What terrible day it will be for that person. To you, it might not be anger. To you, it might just be gossiping. Harmless, harmless thing. I'm talking to this sister about this sister. I'm talking to this sister about this sister. I'm talking to this sister about this sister. And you think he's harmless. <laughs> I can remember one of my, my friends like that. 
<laughs> Once I want to discuss something with her, I'll be like, ah, no, I don't want to discuss this song with you. One of them, I will say, I don't want to discuss this song with you because it might be a gossip. And she will jokingly say, in fact, I will not permit you. Try and come and discuss any sister with me. I will not permit you. She will just joke, you know. But I learned that thing from her. She said, in fact, you are not permitted to discuss that sister with me. She, what she just trying to do to make me to actually speak about the sister because she's not a born again. She's not a born again Christian. She just making me trying to cajole me in, in order to say, ah, okay, let me tell you what I want to tell you. You say, in fact, I, you are not permitted to talk about the sister. I am not going to listen to you. In fact, sufficient, close your mouth. All those stuff. What? She doesn't know that I'm learning something from her. If someone comes to you and want to gossip and say, ah, this person, say, ah, I beg, you are not permitted to do that. Do not come here and tell me about it. I will not listen to you. My ears are closed. If that is what you want to discuss today, I don't want to. You can end the call. If you can actually develop that kind of lifestyle. And what we do not realize is that little forces, these are the things that what spoils the vine. The little forces that spoils the vine. I actually read a story about a sister, a revelation that a sister got. She, uh, 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 she said she died and she encountered God. And she now saw and that process of encountering God, since she was allowed to enter help, and she actually saw a sister that she knows very well in the church, and said, this sister is filled with good deeds, that when this sister died, everybody was so sure that this sister had made it to help. Say this sister, she was so good. He said, when she's coming to church, she will come. Please, if you're hearing any noise, please forgive me, forgive me, please. She said, whenever she, uh, the sister is coming to church, she's coming with an entourage of people that she has won for Christ. And she's actually a giver. Are you an orphan in the church? Those that are in need, that she will be giving freely, whatsoever you have need of. He said, this sister is blessed with the gift of giving. He said, she is a kingdom financier. She gives to the work of God. She gives to those who are in need. See, she was actually shocked to see this sister in hell. So when she asked the devil, what is this sister doing in hell? What is this sister doing here? That this sister, I know her when she was on there, she was very good. He said immediately she said that she realized that the sister was actually carrying a briefcase. A briefcase. So immediately she started asking the devil, what is this sister doing in hell? He said the sister brought down the briefcase and started displaying her works. He said, when I was on earth, when the sister said, when I said, when the sister was on earth, she gave to this also and so. Say she will bring her that fire and show the devil. Say this, this was what she was doing. He said that sister, that her good deed on earth became a load to her. Because immediately anyone start talking about the works that she does on earth, that she did on earth while she was alive, she will open the briefcase and she will bring her the fire. And she was showing the devil. And the devil told her, shut up your mouth. Shut up your mouth. You are here in hell. Your case is closed. And she said, this sister was like, she was demanding explanation to know why this sister ended up in here. That no, this sister should not be here. So she started talking about the sister again. The good, the sister opened the file again, the briefcase, and started displaying, showing the devil her work. The devil said, shut up your mouth. That she came here because of anger. She said, once you have found one thing in all, he said, if you fail in one, if you fail in one commandment, you are guilty of all of them. He said, it was anger that brought her to this place. He said, she has the spirit of anger which she did not deal with. She has the spirit of anger which she did not deal with. So for that, all her works on earth, all her works of evangelism, all her labor, all her toy on earth became useless because it is written in the Bible, if you are guilty of one, you are guilty of all. If you are guilty of one, you are guilty of all. And the devil has so much occupied with believers' minds up to the point that we no longer examine our lives. What will my children eat today? What will my husband, what will my husband eat today? Up to the point that we no longer examine our life. We no longer look at our life. We no longer sit down to actually think what makes the Lord happy. To actually think if we're actually pleasing the Lord, to actually think if we are actually doing what the Lord has called us to be doing, we believers we no longer have that time. I know there was a time when prayer became food for me. You just want to communicate with the Lord when we are once when we, when when we go born again newly. There was this joy of heaven. We come to God and pray, Lord, restore, 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 restore. But the place where joy is supposed to be, bitterness has taken that place. What where where do you want the Lord to restore the joy? Where the Lord the love is supposed to be restored is supposed to be restored in your life. Hate has already taken that place. It is very impossible. Joy is the spirit of the Holy Spirit. There is no way bitterness can be dwelling in you, which is not the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And you expect Holy Spirit to come and dwell with the fruit 
with the, with the fruit of joy, it is very impossible. The Lord cannot restore. The Lord cannot restore joy when bitterness is still there. We come and we cry, Lord, restore my prayer life. Restore, restore. Restore my prayer life. Restore my prayer life. Gossip is still in that place. The spirit of gossip is still in that place. The Bible said that it says sweet water and bitter water cannot come out from the same spring. It is very impossible. It cannot come out from the same spring. The mouth you have used to slander somebody, the mouth you have used to assassinate somebody's character, the mouth you have used to gossip about somebody, is it the Lord that will not come and restore your prayer altar that will come and restore the spirit of supplication. It is very impossible. You are just crying in vain. The Lord is not going to restore until you have examined yourself and asked the Lord to take away the spirit of bitterness. Until you have examined yourself and asked the Lord to take away the spirit of gossiping. Until you have examined yourself and asked the Lord to take away the spirit of evil speaking. The Lord will not restore. The Lord will not restore. The Lord will not restore. He said, Lord, restore. Change my husband. Change my husband. Do this to my husband. Let my husband change. I want my husband to be a born again. I want my husband to be a born again. To uh, submit to the... authority of the Lord. But ah, the Lord has that order for him. But at least little respect, respect in such a way that does not harm your work with the Lord. When your husband says it, you do not do. Then how come when you have not submitted to the authority of your husband, you want the Lord now to change into come? Ah, my sister, the Lord is not going to restore. We have to fix ourselves. Eh? When we fix ourselves, when we fix our life, then the Lord is going to restore. The Lord restore my family, restore my family. What exactly is the Lord restoring in your family? Is it the children that you have taught the way of the Lord? No wonder the Bible said that. The Lord said, for I know my servant Abraham. I know why I called my Abraham. Because I know why I called him and made him the father of all nations. He said, because I know that my servant Abraham will teach the generation after him about the Lord. He said he knows that Abraham would teach the generations after him about the Lord. Abraham would teach them about the fear of the Lord. Abraham would tell them about the Lord that has called them. The Lord was not looking for somebody that he will call and the call will end where, he, where that person is. No, the Lord was looking for someone that would carry the word of the Lord, that would tell the generation after him, that would tell the generation after him about the Lord. And from there, more multitude will spring forth. The Lord said, this is why I chose Abraham. What exactly is the Lord restoring in your life? I can remember a time when my mother called me and said, your niece might be pregnant. A, 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 someone that enjoys a teenager. I was so pained in my spirit. I was complaining. I was saying, Lord, why now? Why now? Ah, that in that boy just dropped and said, ah, how many times have you prayed for this, your niece? And you are here asking me, why now? Why now? Why now? Why now? I repented and I started asking God for mercy. Since that day, I said I will begin to intercede. Since that day, I said I will begin to, I will begin to pray for her. You have to command what you want to see in the life of your children. You have to impute the fear of God in the life of your children. Is it the children that when they wake up, they do whatsoever they like? They watch television and do play computer games. Do this. You are saying the Lord restore. What is the Lord actually restoring in that family? What is the Lord actually restoring in the church? What is the Lord restoring exactly? What is the Lord restoring? We have to deal with ourselves. We have to deal with the foundation of our heart. We have to deal with the foundation of our family. Have you taught the, the children the fear of the Lord? Have you told them about Jesus? Or you still think they are very little? No, there is no excuse with God. There is no excuse. There is no excuse. It's only here that you can make amends. It's only here that you can carry your problem and cry to the Lord. Lord, if you help me in this area, if you help me, take away this anger, take away this, take away. It's only here. My dear, once you get to heaven, the judge alone is the person that is speaking. You don't have time to come and defend your case. Whatsoever is given to you, that is what you will take. You don't have time to say, ah, it was Mommy Jovita that got me angry. That was why I was angry. That was why my heart is hardened. That is why I did not uh, say I, I'm not going to forgive her. Now is that time when you will carry it to the Lord in prayer and say, Lord, now is that time you examine yourself and say, Lord, this is actually what happened. This is why there is anger in my heart. Lord, please, I do not want to be angry. Take it away. Once you cross over to the other side, my sister, there is no time again. No wonder a, a, a singer said, No lawyer there on the judgment day. No lawyer there on the judgment day. No lawyer there. No lawyer there to hire. There is 
is no lawyer to defend your case. Now, while we are on earth, Jesus Christ is your advocate. Now is that time you go back to him and cry out to the Lord. Say, Lord, reveal to me, where have I been offending you? Holy Spirit of the living God, reveal to me, where have I gotten it wrong? Holy Spirit divine, reveal to me, what have I done that has grieved your heart? And the Lord will reveal to us. And the Lord will reveal to us. These past few weeks, I have gone through so many things. I've never seen a worst month in my life since I was born. And this month, I just passed a month of day. So many things happened at the same time. It got up to the point I was so angry with the Lord. It got up to the point I was so angry with the Lord. So many health issues here and there, going here and you are hearing diagnosis. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I was seeking for places to go. I was seeking for man of God. I would say, even touching myself, don't tire. Yeah, I would say, pray for me, pray for me. It was that I heard it. <laughs> when I go to her, pray for me, put me. She got angry one day, said, pray for you for what? What am I praying for you? It is you that have to pray, seek God for yourself. It's, it is you that will have to seek God for yourself. And I'm actually very happy with that rebuke. Because I got so angry up to the point that I was not even looking to where, like, I was not even, I felt, what am I coming? He knows what is happening. I was so angry in my spirit because I did not understand what, what was happening. But it was just that I held it, that she will call, or sometimes I will call and she will be praying. And she said, you don't need to do that. You have to go back. She actually pointed me back to where I go, what, what are you getting angry for? What are you getting angry for? What are you getting angry for? Say, Jesus Christ is king. He is the Lord of lords. What are you getting angry for? Who are you, man? What are you getting angry for? I was actually turned back to God. And I had to go seek God for myself. He even go to a point whereby the uh, man of God, I wanted to, I had no desire for it again. Because then I have to seek God for myself. I have to seek God for myself. So many of us who might think ah, there are things we are going through in our life that at this point you feel you should accuse God. That at this point you do not know. Because at that point I didn't understand. Everything I was doing was to protect where I'm standing in the Lord. But it was as if as I'm trying to protect that month of May, I actually asked God to fix things in my life. Instead of fixing everything scattered, everything scattered. Then I have to realize, at the point I have to realize, when I sat down, you see, you made a prayer. Tell God to fix. So sometimes, well, for God to fix, for God to fix something, had to break everything down and begin to rebuild. That is the way God works. For God to begin to rebuild, he had to break down what is there and begin to refix and begin to refix. And immediately I came back. Immediately, I brought myself back to the Lord. Immediately, I came back. I brought myself back to the Lord. The health issue that I would take drugs, it was getting worse, 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 worse. Yeah. And a dream, I saw a man wearing a white robe with his face covered. I was not seeing the face. He actually came to me, placed his hand on my stomach, and light started entering. Light started entering inside me. When I woke up after that dream, that was the that was the journey of recovery for me. That was the journey of recovery for me. My health started improving. My health started improving. My health started improving. I do not know what you think you might you might be going through in your life. I might I might not know what you think that situation you think you are having that has given you the right or you think you have the right to be angry at God, that you have the right to be questioning the king of kings, that you have the right to ignore the king of kings. My dear, that thing is not enough. Is it husband we are looking for? Everything on earth is just temporary. Is it children we are looking for? All those things are temporary. Is it money? These things are temporary. These things are temporary. It is nothing compared to eternity. This world, everything in it will perish. Everything we think we have, everything will go. But at the end of the day, what matters? Where will you spend eternity? At the end of the day, where are you heading to? At the end of the day, where are you going to spend eternity? At the end of the day, to whom are you returning to? Is it your maker and your creator, which is the Lord, or you are returning to the devil? Or you are joining the devil? Or you are joining the devil? This calls for self-examination. To you, I don't know what that thing is in your life. That needs to be taken away. But this is that moment to cry out to the Lord to take it away. Because we still have a few days left for the Lord to restore. God forbid that after fasting to one day, it's you fasted in vain. Because what you want the Lord to restore, another thing has taken the place of that thing. Because what you want the Lord to restore, another thing has taken the place of that thing. Because what you want the Lord to restore, another thing has taken the place of that thing. Now is that time to see. 
to begin to examine yourself. Now is that time to begin to examine yourself. You say, Lord, draw me closer to you. Draw me closer to you. Yet another thing has taken your heart more than the Lord. Your children, you actually spend more time with your children more than you spend with the Lord. And you want the Lord to restore his relationship with you. Now it's time to examine and place our priority rights and begin to reorganize our life and begin to reorganize our lives and begin to reorganize our life. You say, Lord, I want to know your truth. Lord, I want to know you more and more. The Bible made us to understand that Jesus Christ is truth himself. Yet the spirit of lies has taken the place in your heart. Which Jesus do you want to know? Which Jesus do you want to know? You have to live in truth in order to know Jesus. The Bible says he is the truth. Jesus Christ is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. How can you be having life? You say, Lord, I want to know you. Jesus Christ, I want to know you. Jesus Christ is truth. You cannot have truth and, and lie together. No, the Lord does not walk in that way. Examine your life and let lie go. Let the spirit of lie be removed out of our life. Let the spirit of lie be removed out of our life. Let the spirit of lie go out of our life. Now is that time for self-examination is that time for self-examination now is that time to examine our life we are talking about lord restore the church we want you to restore the church we want you to do this what exactly is the lord restoring what are we presenting to the lord and the lord and the lord is restoring if jesus christ comes to you now and says sister Timmy, what am i restoring what used to be there that you want me to restore what used to be there is it the fire that used to be there you want me to restore is it the, the prayer altar you want me to restore something that does not used to be there we do not have the definition we do not understand the definition of restoration the lord will only restore what used to be there the Lord will only restore what used to be there. And if he's going to restore that thing, has another thing taken the place of that thing the Lord wants to restore? Has another thing taken the place of joy? Has another thing taken the place of patience? Has another thing taken the place of meekness? Has another thing taken the place of faith? Has fear occupied your heart where faith is supposed to be? What is the Lord restoring? This calls for self-examination. And is that time to examine our life? Now is that time to think about eternity. To so many, they might see you as someone that is wasting their time. A singer said, I'll waste my life over and over again for your sake. I'll waste my life over and over a million times over and over again to the end of it, the end of time. I'll waste my life for you. It's because they don't understand what you are, what you it's because they don't understand what you want. It's because they don't understand that treasure you, you want to acquire. They begin to call you someone that is foolish. They say, ah, this one is not my, this person is coming, this person is coming. She say, I don't go marry, I don't go marry, I don't go marry. They don't know what you are looking for. This person is, ah, 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 come and follow me. Let me show you how you are going to do it. Uh, let come and how you are going to do it and get your children. Uh, come, let me show you where you are going to go. They don't understand that there is a place you're seeking, a kingdom that you're seeking that is not of this world. It's just a matter of patience. It's just a matter of patience. When I was going through a lot of things, things, all these things that were so bitter, that was making me bitter, I was thinking, Lord, you need to speak to me now. And you took me to the book of Deuteronomy 11. And when I read it, I was so comforted. If only we we'll get close to the Lord. If only we examine our lives. If only we we'll sit down and meditate and know that what the Lord actually has for us is the best. If only we we'll sit down and meditate and know that this God, what he wants is the best for us. What has Jesus not done? What is your excuse? What are you going to say? Ah, this is the reason of why I ended up in hell. What is that thing? The Lord has already died on the cross of Calvary. He is risen and he is there interceding for you day in, day night. Jesus Christ left his throne in heaven. He came down to die for you and I, just to give us salvation. He did not even end there. He sent the Holy Spirit to this earth to be with you and I, to help us, to lead us on the right path. What has God not done? Many a times you will stray, he will send the Spirit to convince you and bring, bring, bring us back to himself. When I go before him like this, I do not know what to say. I just, I just acknowledge it and thank him. Lord, there's nothing you have not done. I have no excuse. There's nothing you have not done to save me. I'll be a fool if I end up in hell. I will be the worst if I end up in hell. What has God not done now to save you and I? What has he not done? What has he not done to save you and I? What has he not done? What is you, what is you and I excuse? But the devil has so occupied us with the things of this world. The devil has so occupied us with the pleasures of this world. The devil has so blindfolded us thinking of you. If you don't have this in your life, you've not arrived. If you don't have this in your life, you've not arrived. The children of God, we are going through challenges. Why not fight, fight, fight? Ah, we are so more focused on the devil that we forget our savior. 
that will forget our Savior. That will forget our Savior. This is a time to sit back. This is a time to examine your life. This is a time to sit back. It is better for men to say, ah, this one has lost it, oh, sufficient, to oh, this one has lost it. For me to appear before men as nothing, then before God, God sees me as something. That is better for me now. There's one thing I hate in life. Ah, for people to see me to be something I'm not. For someone to see me to be something I'm not. So that's why most of the times I begin to say, ah, I'm not this. Old. I know that used to get Sister Chumoya angry. When I say, I cannot do that, I cannot do Sister Chumoya, I say, oh, come on, you can do this. She'll be angry. She'll start rebuking. You have the spirit of God. Because I'm always afraid of that. People see me to be what I'm not. I don't like it. That is something I don't like. Do not see me to be what I'm not. Instead, it's better for you to see me to be less than what I am. Because what I'm just so much concerned is what about my creator. For you to appear before men, holy, righteous, G, 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 you die. They say, ah, she has gone to heaven. The sister has gone to be with the Lord. Why uh, in hell? The devil is busy tormenting you, torturing you, doing this, doing all kinds of inhuman activities on your body. Ah, God forbid, may we, not, may, may we not end up in hell. May the Lord help us not to end up in hell. This is a time to go back to the Lord. Use these few days. Use self-meditation. Use these few days. Re-examine your life. Use these few days. Has pride entered into your life? Has pride taken the place of humility in your life? Say, Lord, help me to be humble. Lord, help me to be humble. Ah, but pride is there. Pride is there, my sister. Pride is there. Pride is there. Oh, now is that time to do self-examination on you and your family. Now is that time to do self-examination. You've not been teaching your children the way of the Lord. My dear, now is that time to go back, teach them. The Lord restore. What is the Lord restoring? So that the Lord will restore. So that the Lord will restore what you want him to restore. For when there is no fear of the Lord, how do you want God to restore? What do you want God to restore in that family? What do you want God to restore in that family? No child is too little. No child is too little. Even me that I'm that I'm talking here. As I'm talking, I'm also talking to myself. I might not have a children, I might not have children of my own, but I have little ones over here, ones that sleep with me here on the bed. One day I was pray, I was just praying. And when, anytime I would just see her stand up to now, I've not that I said I was going to tell her. I'm going to tell her, and I'm going to tell her after this message because this just reminded me. I will see her, she will stand up, she'll carry broom. No time to pray, no time to do this, no time to even commune with the Lord. No child is too little. No. My sister, where I was living with her, the children, that was how we trained them. They wake up, you carry their children devotion, you give them. And now, even without you supervising them, immediately they wake up. My other sister children, they will just carry their, this year, a daily manner for children, their daily milk, and they will start reading it. They will start reading it. They will start reading it. And when you ask them a question, even if it is something, one lesson that they learn, you encourage them. They are teaching them the fear of the Lord. And this is how they are going to grow. This is how they are going to grow. And you also keep interceding for them in the place of prayer. You intercede for your children. And you also teach them. You also teach them. You also teach them to pray. May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Now let's just open our mouth and begin to appreciate the name of the Lord. Let's glorify the Lord. Let's appreciate God. Let's worship him. Let's worship the Lord. Please let's pray. Let's thank the Lord for today. Let's glorify him. I'm sorry, I'm not letting the way of opening Bible verses. I might just ask it and send to us. Father, Lord, worship you, Abba, Father. We give you all the glory, we give you all the honor. Abba, Father, Lord, you are worthy. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy to be honored. You are worthy to worship. You are the King of Kings. Lord, we thank you for your presence and for your faithfulness. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness. We thank you, Lord, in heaven, Father, for all that you have done. In our knees, dear Lord, oh, my spirit and my flesh, thank you, Lord, in heaven. Are we, O oh Lord, that you are mindful of us? Are we, King of Kings, that you are mindful of us? Who are we, Jesus, Lord, that you hear about us? Who are we, Lord of Lord, Lord in heaven, that you hear about us? Lord, we worship you, we bless you. Lord, we worship you, we encourage you, we Holy Spirit, we worship you, we thank you. Thank you, Abba, Father. For in Jesus, we most victorious name, we pray. Amen. This area is a time to begin to see 
I don't know what is that in your life. Just begin to examine your life. Who is there in your heart? Who have hurt you? Who is that person that have hurt you so much up to the point that grudge is there, anger is there? You keep telling yourself you forgive him, but you have not forgiven. If the Lord should reveal the state of your heart, if the Lord should taunt you with a dream just the way he taunted me, if the Lord should show you, know that you have not let go. That is that time to just self meditate. Is it gossiping? Ask the Lord to help you. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you. Ask the Lord to have mercy. Let the Lord take away, take away anger from my heart. Lord in heaven, take away the spirit of gossip, Lord in heaven. Lord, take away hatred, take away bitterness, Lord in heaven. As many that have hurt us, Lord in heaven, we let go. A shield of days we let go, Lord in heaven. We let go. A shield of Lord, I let go. I let go, Lord in heaven. I let go of every bitterness, Lord, I let go. Father, gossip, Lord in heaven, oh mercy. Father, Lord, I repent the shield of days. The lee of the valley, Lord, I repent. King of glory, Lord, I repent of my father. Have mercy, Lord, of my soul. Have mercy, Lord, of my soul, Lord. Also, my father is in me, Lord, that is not of you. Lord, in heaven, mercy, my father, Lord, mercy, Lord. King of glory, Lord. Mercy, Lord. For in Jesus Christ's most victorious name, we pray. Amen. Amen. It does not just end on where whom have offended you, whom have you offended. The Bible said that the Lord said that He said you should only speak words that minister grace to the hearer. Whom have you spoken to that the words did, did not minister grace to that person? Instead of ministering grace, you brought fear into the heart of that person. Instead of ministering grace, you brought rejection to that person. And instead of ministering grace, the person is feeling like the worst person on earth. And instead of running to Christ, the person is crying and running far away from Christ. Let's begin to open our mouth and ask the Lord for mercy in whatsoever way that has spoken words that have not ministered grace, uh, that have not encouraged anyone. Uh, instead, our words brought them down. Uh, instead, our words drove them away from the Lord. Uh, instead of bringing them to Jesus, we are chasing them far away from the Lord. Uh, oh, Father, Lord, I ask for mercy. For every word that I have uttered, Lord, that has spoken to anyone. Uh, Father, Lord, that have spoken to anyone. Words that have brought it in down, Lord, in heaven. Was that have no minister grace to them? Was that have not encouraged them, Lord, in them? Ah, my Father, Lord, I cry for mercy. Children of Jesus, I cry for mercy. Cry for mercy, children of Jesus. Lord, I repent. Ah, my Father, Lord, I cry for mercy. I cry for mercy, children of Jesus. For in Jesus Christ, most glorious name, we pray. Amen. This uh, we are going to open our mouth. Tell the Lord to reveal things you have done that have grieved His heart. Whatsoever, whatsoever way you are living, uh, be it your character. You might, you might have a character or a particular habit in you that might be grieving the Lord and you do not know. This very hour, there is one character I myself I have. I have this. How, how should I say it? At all times, we should be giving the Lord thanks. Sometimes they will bring food before I know. Food is already in my mouth before I start thanking the Lord. I have to pray to the Lord. Say, Lord, take away this habit. What kind of bad habit is it? Open your mouth and tell the Lord. Let the Lord reveal to you things you are doing in your life that is grieving him. Lord in heaven, reveal to me, Lord in heaven. Father, be it in Karata, a shade of Jesus. Father, my habits, Lord in heaven. Way of life, a shade of Jesus. A choice of God, a shade of Jesus. Anything that I'm doing in my life that is grieving you. Lord in heaven, reveal, Lord, that I may repent. Lord, there's most be revealed to me a shade of death that I may repent of. Uh, Father, reveal to me, Lord in heaven, that I may repent of. Uh, Lily of the valley, reveal to me, Lord in heaven, that I may repent of. Uh, have your way, shade of death. For in Jesus Christ, most victorious name, we pray. Amen. This uh, we are going to cry to the Lord. Tell the Lord to command his spirit to convince your soul whenever you stray away from him. One thing that you are straying far away from the Lord, the Lord is not warning you. The Lord said to whom I love by chastening. You keep straying up to the point. When the Lord is not warning you up to the point, you become a reprobate. You no longer feel, you no longer feel guilty of your sin. So this is one prayer I like crying out to the Lord. Say, send forth your spirit to convince me. Anytime I stray, anytime I'm doing anything that is wrong, let the spirit of the Lord convince me of this and so that I will repent. Prayers in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Abba, Father, Lord, command your spirit. Lord, command your spirit, Lord, in heaven to convince me of sin. Whenever I stray from your presence, whenever I stray from your presence, Lord, send forth your spirit, Lord, in heaven to convince me. Lord, send forth your spirit, Lord, in heaven to convince me. Send forth your spirit, Lord, to convince me. Send forth your spirit, Lord, to convince me of sin. Convince me of sin. 
Abba, Father, Lord, have your way. For in Jesus Christ, was victorious name, we pray. Amen. Amen. The Lord said in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 5, verse 29, He said, Oh, that there were such a heart in them that they would hear me and keep all my commandments always. Oh, that it may be well with them and with their children. This is the Lord speaking, telling Moses, He said, How he weighed that there was a heart in the children of Israel to be able to fear him and keep all his commandments. We are going to cry out to the Lord and plant your fear in my heart because the Bible says it is the fear of the Lord that makes men to depart from iniquity. Tell the Lord to implant his fear in your heart. Prayers in the name of Jesus Christ. Have a fear, Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, implant your fear, Lord, in my heart. Patient of days and blood your fear, Lord, in my heart. Father, Lord, the fear of the Lord in heaven that will make me to depart from in the the fear of the Lord in my heart. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Lord, in blood your fear, Lord, in my heart. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Lord, in blood your fear, Lord. In blood your fear, Lord. In blood your fear, Lord. In blood your fear, Lord, in my life. In Jesus Christ, was victorious name. Amen. 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 Lisa, we are going to cry out to the Lord. Tell the Lord to open your eyes to have a clear vision and understanding of what your purpose here on earth is. Please forgive me for the noise. Please, please forgive me for the noise. We are going to pray. Tell the Lord to open your eyes. To open your eyes to see clearly what the vision to have an understanding of what the Lord created you for. It is very it is an abomination for you to live like just live like God created you to fix something on this planet earth, huh? and you did not fix that in and you die without fulfilling this purpose. Huh? God forbid, we are going to cry to the Lord. Open my eyes, the eyes of my understanding. You and I are going to get the souls that are trooping into hell. The Lord cannot have mommy, mommy, to be that sister, sister, to be a sister, to be a sister, to be a sister, to be Lisa, we are going to cry. Tell the Lord to open your ears. I'm sorry, please forgive me for the noise. Please forgive me. We are going to cry. Tell the Lord to open your ears uh, in order to hear the instructions, the instructions from the Lord um, that will lead you to life. Not the instruction, the instruction from the Lord that will lead you to life. Because we are at the time when the world is being chaotic. Uh, at the time where anything goes, at the time where anything goes, it is that time to be closer to the Lord, to hear from the Lord, to get the instruction that will tend to life. The instruction that will lead you and your family to save
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We are going to pray this and ask the Lord. We want our life to reflect God here on earth. I heard a story about a man where he was just going about his, his normal activities. Up, and a, a driver that was not patient just ran over his leg. That is his car. He ran over the man's leg. He oh, ran over the man's leg. The man turned around. And what the man just uttered was, brother, but why? Brother, but why? He said he did not even react in anger. I was like, hey! When the man said it, I said, sufficient. Will I be able to do that? Even if I did not fight, I would have said, what kind of wickedness is this? At least I would have said, what kind of wicked heart do you have? I would have said that to that man. But what this brother did was he just turned and said, brother, but why? Why do you have to run over my hand? He moved and he moved. See, there is no, anybody that sees that life will see that this one is different. They will say that there is light in this one. They will see that this one is representing Jesus Christ here on earth. That is the kind of life we want to live. I open your mouth and say, the Lord, Lord, walk on me that my life will reflect Jesus here on earth. Abba, Father, Lord, walk on me. Father, I'm crying to you, Lord, walk on me. Walk on me. Walk on me. Walk on me. Want my life to reflect Christ here on earth. in Jesus Christ most glorious name we pray amen mm-hmm. this is how we are going to cry out to the Lord the amen. Lord realign my life and set me on the right track I don't know in any way that we might have missed the track anyway I can remember when I once gave my life to Christ there was such a time that I was praying it was as if the Lord was just pouring liquid love I'm not telling you what did not happen something like a liquid love was just flowing deep into my heart I had to cry out to the Lord please make it for people I thought I was going to explode but now where are those experiences we have gotten so familiar with the Lord up to the point that ah we do no longer have this kind of relationship with him that time the Lord will come you feel ah Jesus I, I miss those days it's time to go back to that life we are going to ask the Lord to realign us with his will let the Lord realign us bring us back on track. Let the Lord bring us back on track. Let the Lord realign our lives to the Holy Spirit. But in heaven, Lord, I have spread my foundation. Lord, I confess before you, Lord, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord in heaven is it the fear of the Lord. Father, bring me back to Father, is it the honor of Lord is heaven? Father, Lord, help me, Lord, to honor you. In Jesus Christ. We are going to pray again and ask the Lord to give you strength over your weakness. I do not know that thing that is weakness in your life that you view as a weakness. There is nothing the Lord cannot do. The Lord can strengthen you and can pull you out of that place. What is that thing that has become a weakness in your life? You do not want to stop this thing, but you do not know. This is our cry out to the Lord. Cry out to the Lord to help you.
Let the Lord help you overcome your weakness. Let the Lord help you overcome your weakness. Let the Lord help you overcome your weakness. See that you are not in prayer at night. You are not for prayer. 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 You are in Jesus name we pray amen we are going to cry to the lord we are crying, Lord, restore, restore. There is something this, when I was going through all that I was going through, I was always sad, sort of filled my heart. But I heard, I read a post on Facebook where the Lord said, joy is my spirit. Joy is my spirit. If you do not have joy, see, it is, it, it is there are things you will go through in life, but the joy of the Lord will still remain there. You might be going through tough situation, but the joy of the Lord will still remain there because joy is the fruit of the spirit now. When joy is no longer there, it means that the Holy Spirit is no longer there now. All that fruit has gone. All that thing has taken the place of joy. If the bitterness has occupied that place, I was like, what? If you die in that state, you are not going to heaven. Bible will say righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. This is the kingdom of God. We are praying for kingdom of God on earth. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. These things are no longer there. The peace of the Lord has been taken away. Bitterness has, taken, has, has replaced where joy is supposed to be. Sadness has replaced where joy is supposed to be. When I read this post, I was like, ah, the Lord said joy is my spirit. If you do not have that fruit, you are not entering. Another thing is in you. I have to cry. Say, let the peace of the Lord be in my heart. We are going to cry out to the Lord. Any fruit of the Spirit that is lacking in our life, or mm. whatsoever that has taken the place where the fruit of the Spirit is supposed to be, let the Lord take it away from us and let the Lord replace the fruit of the Spirit. Patient of this, the place your Lord in me. What is it that has taken the place of the fruit of the Holy Spirit? What is that thing that has taken the place of the fruit of the Holy Spirit? Lord, take it out of my life. Patient of this, take it out of my life. Lord, replace, restore, restore joy in our lives. So peace of the Lord, that peace that passes. Human understanding now. That is a passage human understanding that will draw it in like a river. But restore in me, restore in all this. Restore in your church, Abba Father. Restore in your church, Lord in Abba. Restore in your church, a shame of this. Restore in your church, a shame of this. For in Jesus Christ, most victorious name, we pray. Finally, before I hand over to the moderator, we are going to pray like this. We are going to to ask the Lord, I had a story about him when he was crying to the Lord, telling the Lord, please take not the Holy Spirit for me. He said that rightly, the Lord told him, you are not supposed to be praying for me not to take the Holy Spirit for me. The Holy Spirit has already left. You are supposed to be praying, let the Lord restore. Let the Lord restore. I can remember a dream I was having. I was lying down in a bed. I was lying down on a bed in the dream, in the dream, sleeping. All of a sudden, I just had a voice, no Holy Ghost, no rapture. I stood up immediately from the bed and I started running. I was not seeking for the Holy Spirit. That was when I was trying to make my life right to check. Ah, am I, do I still have the Holy Spirit or not? That boy just came. No Holy Spirit, no rapture. Immediately I heard it. I stood up from the bed and I started walking. I said, I'm looking for the Holy Spirit. I'm going to seek God. Do I have the Holy Spirit? What, my dear, if you do not have the Holy Spirit, that there is no rapture. Because it is the Holy Spirit that will help you to live a, a holy life here on earth. It's the Holy Spirit that is the seal. He say it is the Holy Spirit that seals and the Holy Spirit that bears witness with our spirit that we are the sons of God. If you do not have him, what is bearing witness? What is going to tell the Lord, ah, this one belongs to you? What is going to bear witness and say, ah, this one is of the Lord. This one belongs to heaven. There is nothing bearing witness. So this is how we are going to open our mouth and ask the Lord to restore. In any way, we have grieved the spirit of the living God and he has left us. Ah, let the Lord restore by his mercy. Prayers in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, Lord, in heaven, the shame of this Lord, I cry for mercy. In the name of the valley, Lord, in any way that I have grieved the Holy Spirit that he has left us. Lord, I cry mercy, Lord, restore. In the shame of this Lord, restore. 
Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you, my sister. What a powerful, powerful ministration. God, God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Let us just thank God.